Hi everyone, it's MJ the Fellow Actuary and in this video I want to talk about why I have been wrong regarding Bitcoin. And been wanting to make this video for a while, but this has been the first Sunday that I've had off in a long time. I've been giving an eight week course on financial engineering for the actuarial exam. So that is subject CM2 if you're in England or IFM if you are writing in America. And the thing is, why I, I think it's, it's important to bring that up because here I am teaching finance, you know, did my fellowship in financial applications and we're looking at Bitcoin, which is a financial technology and I've been wrong about Bitcoin. I really don't know why the price is, is as high as it is. Um, I've been in the crypto space since, I mean, I remember uh, I can always put a date on it because I had a job interview in 2014, November 2014. And one of the questions were, um, you know, what is your thoughts about Bitcoin? And back then, all I was like, you know, oh, it's pirate gold on the Internet. Um, and since then, you know, I've, I've, I've tried to learn a little bit more about this technology, but it's still very much a, a mystery to me because Bitcoin poses itself to be a, a currency, an Internet currency. But it's not a very good currency if you look at its economic properties. In order for something to be a good currency, you want it to be a good store of value. So yes, Bitcoin is a great medium of exchange. Everybody wants, you know, we can all trade for, for Bitcoin, that's great. But it also needs to be a store of value. And Bitcoin, because of its high volatility, means it's not a very good store of value. You know, you can hold Bitcoin, and, and I've held Bitcoin, and I feel incredibly uncomfortable holding Bitcoin. I don't know if that's because I'm just very risk adverse, but I don't like the idea that tomorrow it could be worth half or tomorrow it could be worth double. Um, you know, the, the whole thing about a currency is that it rewards people who do work, who put an effort into society and they're receiving a token that they can use at a later time. But with Bitcoin, you have situations where people can buy early and then the price goes all the way up and then you have people who can claim a lot back from society through no additional work of their own. So it kind of breaks the fundamental or, or social idea of what a currency is designed to do. So if Bitcoin's purpose is to be an internet currency, it's, it's failing at doing that, yet its price continues to climb. And I think it's because a lot of people are seeing Bitcoin more as a as an investment rather than as a as a currency. You know, people talking about, oh, you need to hold some crypto in your portfolio, and they kind of saying, oh, you know, it's got a little bit of the diversification benefits from equities and bonds. But if we were to look at Bitcoin as an investment, it also doesn't really have nice cash flows um, that other investments that you'd expect. I mean, think about property. You buy a property and you receive rent on a medium, uh, you know, every now and then, I think at the end of the month or whenever, you get your, you get your rent. Uh, shares, twice a year or once a year, you get your dividend payment. Bonds, you get your coupon repayments. You know, there's this, there's this cash flow that is coming to you and that's the reason why you want to hold these assets because holding these assets is going to provide you with a cash flow a stream coming in and you can use that to meet your daily expenses. Okay, that's, that's what a traditional investment looks like. Bitcoin, there is no yield, there is no dividend, there is no rent, there is no coupon. All you're banking on is that the price will go higher and higher and higher and higher. And if you have to meet your daily expenses, it means you have to sell a little bit, sell a little bit, sell a little bit, until at the end of the day, you have nothing left over. You know, with at least with the property, if your rental income is, is more than your expenses, then you, your wealth starts to accumulate. But with Bitcoin, because you're going to be selling, 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 you're eventually going to have zero. Unless the price keeps growing at this accelerated rate that you keep selling smaller and smaller and smaller pieces in order to maintain uh, your, your, like I say, your daily living expenses. But this is where I think Bitcoin maybe falls short again of being an investment is in order for, or, or, or let's just talk about investments. With investments, we like certainty. You know, we like the fact that I buy this property, this is going to be the rent. You know, yes, there might be vacancies, yet there, there might be, you know, little changes here and there. We have to replace the aircon unit or there's a hailstorm and we have to do repairs and that kind of stuff. So there is uncertainty, um, but we know that, okay, 
this is what the rental income is going to be. You know, the largest portion of the investment, there is some knowledge about it. And yes, there's a little bit of risk that plagues it, but the bulk of it is kind of known. Same with shares. We know that a share is going to pay a dividend year in, year out. There might be one or two, you know, crazy years, like they say with COVID, where the company might withhold that dividend, you know, just to meet their expenses while they go through a hard time. But once things resume, they're going to continue paying their dividend. With Bitcoin, we don't know what the future holds. Like, how is this thing going to grow? Is it going to be adopted on the international stage and then it's going to you know, shoot through the roof? Um, are countries going to collectively ban it and then it's going to, you know, the price is going to be forced down? Um, you know, we don't know. And from an investment, there is so much uncertainty and we have absolutely no idea. Or like I said, that there is no yield coming from it. So Bitcoin is a bad investment and it's a bad currency. And that's why I kind of feel like if you're failing at these two fundamental things, why does its price continue to go up? So I've been trying to think about why have I been wrong about Bitcoin? You know, what is something that I'm that I'm missing? So it's always nice to go read on the internet, especially Twitter, to see what people are saying about Bitcoin. You know, what is the narrative that is driving the price increase? And, you know, yes, there's stories about, oh, it's going to become a global reserve currency. That's never going to happen. Uh, <laughs> this video might, <laughs> might date very badly if that does, but the likelihood of that occurring, oh, <laughs> Very, very low. Yet there's still articles are written on it and people are believing this and they're like, oh, if governments all embrace Bitcoin instead of gold, then, you know, the price of each Bitcoin is going to be worth a million dollars per per coin. You know, there's crazy sentiment like that. So there's one idea that this is going to be a future reserve currency and hence the price is going to go through the roof. The other narrative is that, you know, governments are you know, they're abusing their power, they're controlling us and, they, you know, that whole dystopian narrative and that Bitcoin is is the rebellious move. It's, it's a kind of way to say, you know, stuff you government, stuff your capital um, regulations, we can take our money, we can move it wherever we want. And that is a very, very powerful, powerful narrative. And I think especially in countries like, let's say, China, where there are strong capital regulations to have an asset like Bitcoin that can just bypass these government laws in an instant. I think that, you know, there's a lot of value around that. But I think governments are working to try and stop that, to try and prevent that. And we're seeing it already, like with these exchanges, the, you know, know your customer and, and all these kind of rules and regulations that are getting hit on the exchanges. So... I don't think governments are going to lie down and allow that to continue to happen. But like I say, there's this, there's this rebellious, you know, you buy crypto because the world is corrupt. And what, what fascinated me as well was this whole thing with, with Dogecoin and, and GameStop was how meme culture has got so much momentum and how there's so many, you know, small individual investors that collectively can come together and be quite a force in these markets. Um, I mean, traditional financial theory says that no one individual can influence the market. And then there were jokes about, oh, you know, Warren Buffett could technically, you know, if Buffett said he was buying a share or if Buffett did this, but Buffett never really abused that power. We now have Elon Musk, who, I mean, if you read his Twitter feed, very much knows what he's doing by saying game stonk and doge to the moon and you know tesla is going to buy bitcoin these statements are driving it he's very much a leader in the meme culture and i think that's what's causing a lot of the rally so it's almost like herd mentality that is pushing these these assets up and up and up and you know there's, there's that i think it was was it keens he said you know the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent and you, know, you, you want to keep those words to heart because you don't want to just go and bet against the market and you know short bitcoin because it fails at all these fundamental things because you know the meme culture can can override that and your positions will soon close out and you'll be at, at quite a big loss so it's it's always good to say well maybe the market isn't irrational you know 
maybe I've just been wrong in my in my analysis. So this is what I've just been I've been thinking about lately. I mean, I've been accumulating quite a bit of of Ethereum by by selling art pieces on on Super Rare. And initially I was I was selling a lot of the ether, converting it just into rands, buying the MSCI, um, you know, exchange traded fund. I mean, being incredibly passive, you know, really have the bulk of my my portfolio is now gone back into being passive. Like before COVID, it was like a hundred percent passive. COVID happened, and I think you know because we were bored because of lockdown, I went in, made some active stock selections, which was quite a fun thing to do, very rewarding. The stock market bounced back, and I'm slowly moving back into this this passive position, having a few satellites out there in in selected stocks. Like for one, I kind of think property has been is getting a lot of bad rep at the moment. But you know, people saying, "Oh, working from home is the future." I'm like, mm, I think people want dedicated workspaces, and so I do have like you know small little bets here and there on on various assets. And so what I've decided to tell myself is all the ether that I'm getting now from selling my my NFTs on on Super Rare and and Rareable, I'm going to continue to hold it even though I don't want to. So this is a very weird thing to say: is that I'm holding. It's not a. It's a significant amount. It's a significant amount in crypto, and I, I do feel uncomfortable about holding it because I do feel like I thought a crash was going to come in January. I really thought a crash was going to come in January. I thought a crash was going to come in February, and yet the market keeps going up, up, and up, and up. And yes, I know there's like these little dips where it goes, you know, from sixty down to forty nine thousand USD, but it, it seems to bounce back, and you know, it has this this trend and it's, it's almost like there's this this narrative that Bitcoin makes you rich is back in business. I mean, I think that's the best way to explain the Bitcoin price history is to to look at the narrative. 2014, it was this is internet pirate currency um, that no one really understands that you can use to buy drugs off the Silk Road. So it's kind of like unless you're really you know big into IT and, and cryptography, you kind of stayed away from it. But the people who did hold it started building momentum. People started writing articles on it because it was a very fascinating technology. I mean, the way the blockchain works is it's genius. It really is captivating. And so the narrative went from being this being internet pirate gold to, hmm, Bitcoin, you know, is making these nerds rich. And as soon as it was like Bitcoin is making these nerds rich, uh, I think this is kind of also when I started getting in on it, it was we saw this huge, you know, climb from 20, 2015 to like 2017, there was this huge climb. And then of course, the narrative came up, Bitcoin's in a bubble. Bitcoin's in a bubble. And we had the crash at the end of 2017. Bitcoin fell all the way down. And then the narrative was Bitcoin is dead. It's a failed experiment, all that kind of stuff. And then it was kind of like, it, it stayed dead for a long time. Stayed dead for, well, I don't mean a long time, like a couple of months, which in Bitcoin terms is is long. And then the narrative was like, maybe Bitcoin's coming back. Maybe Bitcoin's coming back. And it started going up just slowly, slowly, slowly. And then it was, Bitcoin is back. Like after COVID, it took a little bit of a hit and all that kind of stuff. But like I say, all the assets kind of did that. But then it was like, Bitcoin, Bitcoin's back. And then it pumped. It absolutely pumped. I missed it completely. I absolutely did not see that pump happening. In fact, I had a lot of Bitcoin that I sold um, during COVID because I said, I don't know, it was, it was, look, in hindsight, it was a very stupid thing, stupid thing to do. But at the time it was, I don't know, it felt like the right thing to do. I remember I had friends and they're like, they're still holding Bitcoin. And I was like, oh, you know, that's a, <laughs> that's a risky one to hold. But that risk has paid off. You know, I think at that moment, Bitcoin could have gone down even further, or like what did happen is that it did shoot up. And you know, there's normally the more risk you take on, the more return you're going to get. And I think at that time, I was like, we've just had COVID, assets are being shocked, everything's going a little bit crazy. Let me rather move this money onto the stock market and divert my attention there. Because also the Bitcoin news and what's happening and different upgrades, it, it does start to become a little bit overwhelming. And I don't like to necessarily hold something that I don't really understand. So even though blockchain was quite nice and easy, well, not easy, 
it took like a few months to to get your head around but once you got your head around you're like okay cool i can trust this technology but because of all the updates and the latest news and the trends and this and that and this person's opinion and then this fork and then this other coin coming up and it just it does become quite quite overwhelming and i think that was also one of the reasons why why i got out but yeah it's 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 been fascinating to know why why was i so so wrong was it just because like i said there was it was a high risk i wasn't prepared to take on that risk and the risk turned out for the good and we've seen the thing sh uh, shoot up but then you have to ask yourself like why is it shooting up like 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 you can see, uh, this wasn't a video that I came with a, with a bit of a script. Um, and it's always not the best thing to do is to, to try and think uh, <laughs> on these videos. And I see, I've just got the, the GoPro shooting me. And I can see it is, is hitting 15 minutes. So I should probably start wrapping, wrapping this video up. But like I say, it just, it, it's weird. It, it almost feels like the two things that make Bitcoin of use contradict each other. As soon as Bitcoin becomes stable, like let's say Bitcoin was to come stable and for the next five years it was going to just sit at 50,000 US dollars. Like let's say that just happened. Uh, that was going to happen. Most people would sell. They would say, I don't want to hold an asset that just stays stagnant. You know, I rather want to put it in equity, property, um, or bonds and get my coupons, my rent, and my dividends, you know, something to beat inflation. Um, so as soon as Bitcoin becomes stable, people will sell it and it will and it will drop. But the more crazy and high Bitcoin is, the less practical it actually becomes as a as a form of of trade like as a trading mechanism i mean i don't actually know that many people who who use bitcoin to meet their daily expenses i mean there's some shops that you know try to act cool like oh we accept bitcoin but you follow them for three or four months after they announce this and they take it away and they say well there's only two or three people doing it and the accounting nightmare that it involved and buying the coins and then selling it and taking the one percent you know fee from the exchanges and it, it just started becoming a, a big big mess so bitcoin like i say for me it doesn't make sense that this thing has has value i understand the technology is very cool um and like I know people tease me about NFTs saying, oh, it's just a JPEG. And it's normally people from the crypto community. And I'm like, well, if you think about it, Bitcoin is just a number in a, in a database. But I don't say that as an argument against it. Because I mean, one could argue that a legal contract is just words on a piece of paper. You know, there is this, this social network effect that I think this is what gives Bitcoin a lot more power of, over all the other um, altcoins except for ethereum ethereum seems to to also kind of have this um is this community effect the social networking effect like we all kind of have this collective understanding everyone on the internet that bitcoin can't be hacked bitcoin is a little bit of a rebel thing to hold if you're feeling anti you know the authority of a government and it really i think bitcoin has a very very powerful brand it, and i think that's where the value is now in the short term but i don't know medium to long term I, I really don't know bitcoin like i say i don't hold any of it i've got some ethereum just because it's good for my portfolio to have a little bit of diversification um so i do hope it goes up because bitcoin ethereum you know the rising tide pushes all the boats up but it's it, it really is a weird one. So if you've made it this far into the video, uh, which is maybe just one or two of you, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know why you think Bitcoin has value and if you think it's going to continue to go up in the future and the reasons behind that. Like, are we just all aboard this hype train? And is this hype train just, you know, has so much momentum? Or is there something that I'm missing? And if I am... I'm really, really want to know. I really, really want to know why. What, what am I missing with regards to this Bitcoin thing? So, yeah, please let me know in the comment section below. And thanks so much for watching. And, yeah, have a great uh, Sunday evening or whenever you're watching this. Cheers.